girl, tell me how you feel. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I think I might, I might call the podcast that because at first it was going to be we need to talk because everything I've done has pretty much been we need to talk. But yeah. <clears throat> maybe it's time to re- retire. The we need to talk. Retire the we I need to talk. I think it's pretty good, though. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay oh. if I move this yeah. a little bit? So you can see me? Yeah, so I can see you. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Turn. I don't know. I think I like we need to talk. We yeah. need to talk. Okay. Yeah, because I think <clears throat> your things are very conversational, conversation mm. starters. Okay. And when it's like we need to talk, it's like, ooh. Maybe like, the church is called we need to talk, but the sermon. It's black, black girl, girl tell me how you feel. feel. We got something. Good. I like that. All right, Raina. So all right, let's do this. Let's talk about it. So <clears throat> obviously, as we know, mm-hmm. um, there has been a conversation starter mm-hmm. uh, by the name of Kevin Samuels. An up war starter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, let's start with like you tell me about how you learned about Kevin Samuels and your immediate thoughts, mm-hmm. and then I'll ask you some questions. Yeah. I think, uh, from what I remember, I think my boyfriend actually introduced me to him, but he doesn't even remember. But for some odd reason, I remember. I just remember like little clips, but I I didn't remember having the initial like, oh, in my gut until like, I think the average at best video came. And I was like, yo, who is this dude? I was like, what the hell? I said, well, before, because I'm, I'm, I'm a person of like, I have like very big opinions, but I always like to do a little bit of research. And then I'm like, okay, well, some of the stuff I get what he's saying, but I think, uh, I think he initially I was just like, I just, I don't know, something about him, I just really don't like it. I, I don't. I think the way that he is when it comes to women, especially black women, and he's just, and, and most women are saying it's just not what he says is how he says it. I'm not even going to talk about that. I think it's the fact that when he talks to women, there's almost this this distaste that he has for okay. them that I feel that he has. Okay. And then, you know, the fact that like when he asks questions of like their sizes and she's like, oh, I'm like a 12 or 16. or like, oh, well, you're obese. I'm like, you know, the average size of a woman is a size 12 or 14. Mm-hmm. I'm a size 15. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't even think that I'm I don't know women's size yeah but a lot of people know what that means but when I tell okay size 15 so basically like um how large a waist is or stomach or um the hips like basically all of that so So is it based on the hips or is it based on the stomach it's based on I would I would say both really what fits around your waist and your hips some women have more hips than others Mm -hmm. so sometimes they may have to go up a size to fit their butts or the, to fit their wide hips, okay. even though their waist may be a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. So if a woman is a size 15 or 16, it may not mean that she weighs a whole lot. It's just how her body is proportioned. And then I think he fails to kind of look at as, as African people were made bigger. Mm-hmm. We're not made, most of us are not made super skinny size zero. It's, it's not that often that you meet one of us that's like mad skinny. Mm-hmm. So I think it's that. And then I don't know. I understand what he's saying about the whole like these girls wanting high valued men. But I'm like, where are these girls coming from? Where are they? Mm. Like, have have you been meeting them? I'll get to me. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. going, going, I'm just. And then also um, another thing, too, is what really gives you the right to be this opinionated in terms of relationships? Where is your history of successful of a successful relationship within your life? Right. Maybe he does have a relationship and we just don't know about it, which is fine. But it kind of reminds me of Derek Jackson. Mm. He's talking all this shit about like wh- what women should be going for, or not go for, which is a lot of times he could be right. But we didn't know about his wife until we found out that he was cheating on his wife. Mm. So it's like I, I don't like the relationship gurus who don't have anything to back it up. Because I feel like if you feel like so entitled to give those kind of opinions, you need to have a wife, a healthy relationship, and a healthy family dynamic. So you don't like Steve Harvey either? Steve Harvey, he's a hit or miss. Because there's times, there's times too where I'm just like, okay, but you you had, you're on your third marriage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
he's on his third marriage and he's been with the woman for over a decade. So maybe there's almost a pattern of learning his mistake because now he's in a relationship where it, it looks to be solid. We don't know if it is, but it looks to be solid, even though there are rumors that he cheated on his ex-wife with the new wife. Mm. Yeah. So okay. That's the part where I'm just kind of like, all right, now, Steve, you're treading, you're treading lightly. So let me ask you this. Why, yeah. why do you think, because you said your boyfriend introduced you to Kevin mm-hmm. Samuels, why do you think so many men, particularly black men, mm-hmm. resonate with the content? Because they don't like black women. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. I think it's because, honestly, men haven't really had a space mm. to uh, come out with what they feel. Mm. And in regards to their dating experiences or their relationship experiences, because on our end as women, you know, we always have this perception of like all men cheat, which is a lot of men do cheat, Mm -hmm. but then also a lot of women cheat too. But there's not many men that come out on social media or will put their voice, yeah, yeah, or voice their, you know, go on live and talk about a girl that did them wrong. That's not a thing. Then it's almost like they're not really allowed to do that. It's not until you get to know the black man that you know what his dating history is and you know what he's been through. But I think that's probably the reason why they gravitate towards that. And then I think there's almost this, this ego and confident boost that a lot of black men get from these you know the red pill communities Mm -hmm. and those kind of things too because i understand also in the world that you guys live in Mm -hmm. you guys in the societal aspect you guys are not deemed like the best candidates for anything so they can go somewhere where they feel like their opinions mattered and they're seen yeah okay um (laughs) but then i think also a lot of black men have complexes with black women too Hundred percent. Yeah. Thousand percent. I I I think I think the part that we miss sometimes because that's the first question I like to ask. Like, why do you think most men resonate with the content? Most women dislike the content. What What has made more sense to me is um, so statistically, you know, I work in marketing. Right. Eighty percent of retail decision making is made by women. Mm, Right. mm Mm-hmm. And because that's the case, and because we know capitalism makes the world go around, right. the machine has focused itself on the woman. Mm-hmm. Um, how does the woman think? How does the woman feel? What reality does the woman want to create for herself? Yeah. So with that being said, like you get Derek Jackson's because he understood that women are the ones who spend the money. Women are the ones who shape culture. So let me tell women exactly what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are not enough people or spaces with enough uh, courage to tell the truth, Mm -hmm. right? Um, The reason Kevin Samuels is is famous is because he decided to push back, Mm -hmm. right? The first like two or three years of his channel, he was just talking to men. So imagine what he's saying now to women, just to men. Yeah. Like there's a video he went viral. He was asking a dude if he had a big dick. Oh, I remember yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dude was like five seven. He worked at McDonald's or some shit. And he was like two hundred or something pounds. Mm-hmm. He was like, "You're fat." I'm like, yeah. "Oh my god!" Even, and and, and even he wanted then. a bad bitch. Like, yes. So so the whole point is like, in general, mm-hmm. our society now. The Western world or whatever, I know yeah. you're, you're from Haiti, yeah. I'm from uh, Nigeria, yeah. is entitled. Yeah. We, f- we all feel worthy. We all feel chosen. We mm-hmm. all feel special. The exception to and the rule. E- exactly. Which is sometimes I have to, because I'll always say like, well, I'm not that way. So why are they coming at women like that? Because there's so many, like the women that I'm surrounded by, they think like me. But of course, like you surround yourself with like-minded people. So sometimes you forget that there's an outside, outside of, there's more than just your bubble. And I had to remember, like, sometimes you can't be like, but I'm not that way when you might be the exception to the rules. Exactly. And, and, and that's the unfortunate thing. Like, the, the rules still stand. Yeah. And I don't feel sympathy for the women who call your show. <sighs> Those, I, I, it, it irritates me. I'm going to tell you why. It, it, like, Yes, yes. I'm going to tell yes, you what. Tell me, tell me. The reason I don't feel sympathy from the average of best video to, to all the videos today is because if you call Kevin Samuel's show, you are looking for a specific archetype. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. you're looking for a specific guy. This guy makes six figures. He's six foot. He got a jawline. He's handsome. He's charismatic, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. Cool. The reality of it is the way the world works, women are hypergamous, mm -hmm. men are polygamous. Mm -hmm. Hypergamy just means you go after the best possible option. Yeah. If you find that nigga, mm -hmm. everybody else wants him. Yeah. So going back to the entitlement, what makes you feel deserving of that man? Yeah. Now, the thing about it is nobody calls that show asking, hey, Kevin, how do I get a man of integrity? How do I get a man of character? Yeah. How do I get an honest man? How do I get a God-fearing man? Whatever you want. Yeah. How do I get a six-figure man? Because even the average of best girl, she said that I'm finding that I can't respect men who make less than me. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to hold men to a superficial standard, like how much, how many zeros are in his bank account, mm -hmm. guess what we're going to do? Yeah. And see, and that's the part with him where I understand what he's saying, because as men, you guys are very visual creatures. Thanks. You guys are not in, like, you guys will look at a woman first and, and then determine if you want to pursue that or not. For us, yeah, it can be superficial, but when we start to speak to you, it's like, okay, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of gaze yeah. what kind of quality of life we can possibly have. But I think where the average at best video, the part that I didn't like mm -hmm was when he talked about her having a child. Mm. And he's told other single moms where it's like, well, why, why do you feel like deserving of having any kind of man or this type of man if mm. you have a kid? And I'm like, what's the difference between a man coming in with kids and a woman? Now, remember I had, before we started recording, I said for men, it's, it can be a lot easier mm. because you guys don't have the child mm. a lot of, as much as the woman, which is a lot of times is very unfair, but a lot of times the system can come in and make that happen. But there's so many women that I have met, known, grew up with, were in my family, who met great men with them having kids. So to kind of tell a woman that, oh, like you're less desirable because you are a mother, yeah. I think that's completely wrong. Okay. So again, we have to put it in the context of what do these men want? Mm -hmm. Because Kevin Samuels, he's talking about a very specific and specialized group of men, mm -hmm. right? So unfortunately, what they want isn't reflective of all men, but it's what they want. So you have to think about the guy who poured himself into his work, yeah. achieved greatness, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, is meticulous in everything he does, everything he creates. With that being said, that type of man, that alpha, yeah. is going to go for the best of the best. Mm -hmm. As a society, we have decided having children lowers your, your, your quality. Mm -hmm. as, as biologically, we've decided or, or our genes decided that having children takes a toll on your body. Yeah. So with that six-figure, eight-figure sweetie guy that yeah. they want the best of the best, Unfortunately, it's some badass MILFs. They are. But unfortunately, it decreases your value. Why should it decrease the value? I'll tell you why. Yeah, why? Because I, it doesn't decrease you guys' value. And I have a daughter. It so actually I'm, increases I'm a your value, which is because, so unfair. Because here's the thing, right? So number one, um, Biologically, mm -hmm. you know, we, we value each other by our ability to procreate. Right. Like some of the things that men like and women, women like and men all go back to that primitive. Is this going to be a good gene partner to create a person who's going to survive and thrive in the mm -hmm. world? Right. Yeah. I want a man who's tall because I want tall children. Yes. I want a man with a good immune system because I want kids with good immune yeah, systems. Survival of the all fittest. about survival. Mm -hmm. So with that being said. When a man has procreated mm -hmm. in a way subconsciously, it proves to the rest of the kingdom that he is capable. He is, he is virile. Yeah. Right? You would think it would be the other way around. That's what here's I don't get thing. with humanity. What here's, kind of... Here's the thing. The reason is because, number one, the physics of sex. Okay. Somebody's being entered. Somebody's entering. Yeah. 
Then you look at nine months gestation. Mm -hmm. For nine months, your body is being ripped to shreds to bring another life into the world. Mm -hmm. And then after that, your body might not go back to what it was. So even the decision to be like, okay, I'm going to have this man's child. Mm -hmm. Some people will call it, it's the greatest gift you can give a man. It's the greatest honor you can give a man. It's mm -hmm. to decide, I'm going to wreck my body irreparably wreck my body mm -hmm. to clone you because mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, you do that to other men, other gorillas, other chimpanzees. Yeah. You're a less desirable mate now because I still have the choice of these other un, un unpollinated flowers. Okay. So unfortunately that's what it is. It, 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 it decreases a woman's value because I mean, we're not that far removed from, like, you had to be a virgin to get married. That was not that long ago. It wasn't. You know, so, like, men haven't... that was our grandparents. Men Literally. haven't evolved that much. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's... The, I feel like men are starting to evolve. Yeah. Oh, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. But I guess because I... Moms I think, are getting sexier, too, though, so... But that's the thing. Like, that's moms, thing. moms are yeah. getting... Yeah. Because but, there's mm. many... Because there's moms mm -hmm. that look... So much better than I do. And I have no kids. And mm -hmm. they don't have an inch of rolls or anything. You should have seen them before. Well, I mean, if they look good now, I can only imagine what they look like before. Most of the time, they look better before. Yeah. But, but I think the other thing, too, is like the... Um, most guys have this, this, this complex where it's like, I want to conquer something nobody else has conquered. Mm, okay. Right. And what we see, cause I've, I've dated single moms before, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. another man is, is permanently ingrained in her. There is no divorcing it. Un unfortunately, How? not, not necessarily like she's going to go back to him. She's yeah. going to cheat on you with him. Yeah. But like, he is a permanent fixture in her life because of but see it's the, it's the opposite way once a woman ha how not necessarily how because because she didn't I, enter I think, me okay she didn't enter me or leave anything in me i left something in her yes but you still have have a child so sure. that that other human being will mm. always be in your life because you guys carry the sure. biggest bond that you can have with someone sure but i i think what i'm what i'm getting at is like she suffered for me. There's that much ego in having a yes. child. What the Niggas hell? Niggas are egotistic. Listen, I'm are not you saying serious? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what it is. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what it is. That there's the ego of li literally that bee pollinated that flower. And there's always going to be some remnants of that bee inside that flower. Well, then maybe that's the reason why um, with, with a lot of women, there's a lot of women that don't want to date men with kids. I wonder if it's the same kind of mindset. It's not true, though. I want to be the first. Sure, but it's not true. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, because there's so many women dating men with kids. I, I'm one of them, you know. It took me a lot of, of mindset changing and shifting to be able to do it, but I'm, you know, I'm still doing it. You know, and making that decision before I even ever met him. Yeah. But... It's like, kind of like, like when I look, look at him, mm -hmm. you know, with him having children... I mean, his his sex appeal never went away. And when I look at the mother of his children, they're very gorgeous women. So it's like she and and it, the first mother of his the the um his first uh baby mother she married, you know, and she's still married at this point. And the second one she's dating with no problem. Very beautiful woman. So that's why I don't know. I don't know with that one. I mean, but, but the bottom line is, like, dudes generally might not have a problem with a woman who has kids. Mm -hmm. A top one person. Let, let's go back to the numbers, because I think this is important. So yeah. I, I went to, um, I, I did a little bit of research to find out if those numbers were true about, yeah. like, what percentage of men make six figures and this and that. Yeah. 10%. 10% of men make six figures. Total. Yeah. Now, we're not controlling for age. Mm -hmm. because we know earning potential goes up as you get older. So, like, let's take out the 45-year-olds, the 50-year-olds, yeah. the motherfuckers who've established themselves. Yeah. And let's say you're 30. You mm -hmm. just want to narrow it down to 30-year-old men. Mm -hmm. They didn't control for race. 
Because most, most women, most black women want a black man. Yep, that's Then true. control They're for not. sexuality. Mm -hmm. A man who likes women. Mm -hmm. Then control for a man who you feel like is charismatic, handsome, whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. You get a very small minority of men mm -hmm. who have the pick of the litter. Mm -hmm. There was a girl who made a video on Instagram. I thought it was funny. She was like, what makes you think you deserve your own good nigga? What makes you think you deserve, you your, deserve own? your own good nigga? <laughs> Ain't that many good niggas out here. So what makes you think you deserve your... What do you have special <laughs> that you don't want to share? And that's another problem within itself, too. Mm. The fact that we don't have that many good niggas. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the result of that is men of that caliber can be a little bit more uh, selective. selective. You know? yeah. So like they can, they can control for whatever the fuck. They control, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want a girl with kids. I don't want a girl over a certain weight. And the reality is... If you are going to, because I think the bigger conversation here is we allow women to be superficial about men, mm -hmm. but men aren't allowed to be superficial with women. But you guys are though. In what way do you feel like you guys are not allowed? Okay. So I'll give you, I'll give you several examples. So you can discriminate against a nigga because he's not tall enough. Mm -hmm. You could discriminate for dick size. Mm -hmm. You could discriminate. Some women discriminate because of weight. Some women discriminate because of swag. He doesn't have enough bass in his voice. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard women say these things. <laughs> he's not dark <laughs> enough. He's not light enough. Uh -huh. He's not. He doesn't have swag. Whatever the fuck that means. He's not thug enough. Whatever the fuck that means. Mm -hmm. But you tell them, well, oh, she's too big, mm -hmm. or she's dark, or she's light, or whatever. Fuck. But dudes now do you're it though. Misogynist. Yeah, but but the same vitriol. Uh huh. Like that we're met with, yeah. y'all aren't met with when you do that. And, and part of that entitlement, so for instance, I was having a conversation with another friend of mine. If me and a woman are, are having sex, if I don't get hard, mm -hmm. it's my fault. If she doesn't get wet, it's my fault. Really? Because I feel like women internalize when a man doesn't get hard. But generally, it's still our fault. I didn't, I didn't foreplay enough. I didn't arouse her enough. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. Well, no, no, if no, we both get drunk, uh -huh. if we both get drunk and have sex, mm -hmm. she, can, she can claim I raped her. Okay. Yeah. There, there is a, there, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying, but there is a shifting tide of men are the perpetual just, it's, it's our fault, especially black men. Mm-hmm. I mean, the rest of the world is telling us we ain't shit, and we have to hear from our own women. Yeah, but here's here. But the thing is, too, we also have to talk about ownership of fault mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of because it's interesting because as black women, we feel the opposite. We feel like you guys get more of a leeway than we do mm -hmm. because, like, for instance, a man can be a baby daddy of like seven different women, yeah. i.e., Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. um, he's creating all these broken homes and people are just like, okay. I mean, there's a lot of people debating about it and having, you know, um, an opinion on it, but it's like, he's not really being held to, oh, you're disgusting or like you're a whore. Like you're not thinking of like the bigger picture, but let a woman who makes just as much as she does. And she goes around having seven different baby daddies. She's called a whore, a slut and all these yeah, things. Yeah, because she is. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, she is. What are you talking about? <laughs> she is because it's not natural. How? Really? It's not natural. No. Um. I, I think I think you know my core principle is that men are naturally uh, polygamous. Women are naturally hypergamous. Okay. So left to our devices in the animal kingdom, cavemen or whatever the fuck. Yeah. The women always gravitated towards wanting the top guy, whether it was yeah. the biggest in the jungle, whether it was the king, the czar, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Men, naturally, if you look at monkeys, they want the, 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 the large majority of women. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not as much about quality mm -hmm. with us, it's about quantity. Yeah. And part of the reality of that is like, if we, we are dating, we both cheat on each other. Mm -hmm. I could have 36 women or more pregnant simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You can only be pregnant by one man. Mm -hmm. So even at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how promiscuous you want to be. Only one man can knock you up. Yeah. One man at a time. One, one man at a time. Exactly. Every nine months. <laughs> only one man at a time. Yeah. Right. So like the, the mandate that that sets is like you have every incentive to go find the best one man. 
to carry his seed for nine months. Mm -hmm. And even with that being said, like a low sperm count is 15 million. Mm -hmm. 15 million is a low sperm count. Average sperm count is supposed to be between 200 and 300 million. Mm -hmm. They say it's going down, but the average woman is born with about 200,000 eggs. Yeah. Not even a million. Yeah, and we lose them every month. Exactly. <laughs> so again, oh, biology is telling you, <laughs> I'm going to give you a small number of this thing. Go find the best guy mm -hmm. to fertilize these eggs. Mm -hmm. Biology is telling us, like, hey, you can mm -hmm. throw your shit in the toilet. You can throw your shit. Like, it's in abundance. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's not the same. So, okay. So, if that's the case, then why is it that we get talk shit about when we are hypergamous? hypergamous? Because if that's the case, if, if we have a very small window of fertility, because it is, I think it's between the ages of, I think, 12 and until like 35. So really, let's say 18, let's use the legal age, 18 or 35. After 35, that's when you start gestation uh, high pregnancy, pregnancy, high risk pregnancy. I came from a high risk pregnancy. My mother actually died on the table having me. She came back to life, thank God. Um, and she was 40 years old when she had me. She had preeclampsia. Yeah, yeah and that's what kind of knocked her out. Um, and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm, yeah. So with going, so we have that that window. So why is it that because we're trying to find, I guess, the the, the fittest, like the mm -hmm. where they, we can have the most, um, the child that can survive the most and have the best life. So if that's the case, then why are we getting judged for it? You shouldn't be. Because it, does, it doesn't matter if you're being judged. That's what, if, like I said, left to women's devices, left to men's devices, that will still happen. So like when you see people talking about gold diggers and shit like that, mm -hmm. sure, some women consider gold actual gold. Mm -hmm. Some women consider it like goals mm -hmm. and like a man with ambition or whatever the case. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is women are biologically incentivized and socially incentivized since the beginning of time mm -hmm. to find the best possible man mm -hmm. that she can attract and retain. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in this day and age right now with this generation, we mm -hmm. are getting extremely judged for having this mindset and natural thing of getting the man that's, that's the best. Mm -hmm. Because with Kevin Samuel saying like, you know, where do you feel entitled to want to get that? Mm -hmm. This is, is, is judgment. Well, but, but see, I think it's, it's important to frame that judgment. That judgment is coming from a place of why do you feel entitled to this man? Mm -hmm. Because the idea is I can look like Lizzo. Mm -hmm. I can talk like Cardi B. I can, I, can, I can act like whoever the fuck, and I'm it's still funny. entitled to um, Barack Obama. And that's not the case. Yeah. Because at the end of the day... I believe whenever you want something in life, you have to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to start with, am I attractive to this person? Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, Kevin is blunt about like what that person is looking for, but he's not wrong. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of those guys yeah. want you to be a size white girl. And they want, you to, <laughs> they want you to be fit, feminine, and friendly because typically that's what guys like. Yeah. And a man with power doesn't, doesn't want a, a powerful woman. Mm -hmm. We don't. We're not attracted to that. It doesn't earn you brownie points. Yeah. So um, I think also maybe, maybe I'm thinking maybe the reason why a lot of women are trying to strive for the higher potential men is also because a lot of average. And I'm looking at more of like black men, black women, not more of like, yeah. a, you know, everybody. Yeah. 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 It's about us. <laughs> um, a lot of average black men in the U.S., the quality of them just aren't that great for a lot of us black women because there's there's a lot of them that don't take ownership in what they do. A lot of times they're really immature. They're not ready for marriage. They don't care about marriage. They don't value marriage. A lot of times we don't even feel valued. We get into these relationships with a lot of these, you know, average black men and we don't feel like we're valued as 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 the women in their lives. So I think what happens is we become so conditioned to being like, okay, well, if this average guy is doing me like that, then let me try to find something that has more resources and then maybe it could be a little bit better. And that's why I feel like there needs to be a better, instead of people pointing the fingers and shouting at each other and, and, and just faulting one another, 
there needs to be a bigger conversation on what needs to be done from black women and black men for our relationships to be better because we have a fucked up dynamic with one another. Mm. And I think that's why I have an issue with Kevin Samuels because he continues that war because how I see black men talk about black women and how I see black men, black women talk about black men. I'm like, he's adding fuel to the fire. Where is he trying to find it, because it's okay to say you're shitty in that way, you're shitty in that way, but where's the solutions that you're giving in order for us to come together? Because there's not many of us getting married mm. when in our in our culture and in our community. I think, um, you know, I, I think you could make the forest fire argument where, like, you have to fight fire with fire sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what was it called? Controlled burning. Yeah. Um. I I see what you're saying. Um, I do, however, think there's a utility to the fire starting. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because part of the reason why it feels like we're talking past each other and not Mm -hmm. talking to each other is because, and I, I think I said this in the last video, but black men aren't good communicators. That's true. Black women aren't good listeners. I can say that. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the reality of it is like when, yeah. you, when you're talking to somebody that you feel like you're smarter than mm-hmm. or you feel like you're more uh, more capable communicator, mm-hmm. nine times out of 10, you're going to run over them. And, and my experience talking to some because I like to think of myself as better than average yeah. communicator, especially as a black man. Yeah. But my experience with talking to other black men is like, yo, I, I just let her have it, bro. I don't even, there's no point expressing myself because she's not that. trying to hear yeah. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. A lot of, and this is just female conditioning, but a lot of it is men are forced to deal with the world as it is. Mm-hmm. Women are allowed to pretend the world could be something else. Mm-hmm. It's a strength. Because you have foresight to be able to imagine a new world. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what ends up happening, and you see this in a lot of couple debates, like he's talking about like, yo, this is what it is. These are the numbers, whatever. And then she's saying, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, Mm -hmm. I feel. And when you're talking to somebody, the average woman says more words a day than the average man. man. (laughs) The average woman started talking earlier than the average man. The average woman (laughs) is encouraged to express herself. Men aren't good at it. So we shut down. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's a good thing. I'm just talking about what it is. So in order for us to imagine what it could be, Mm -hmm. we have to um, we have to empathize because. You know, as somebody who started conversations and public conversations, one of the things I saw, niggas didn't show up. Like when I when I did my organization in college, it was ninety eight percent women. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And me. <laughs> and and it's and I feel like you're always more surrounded by women because you're such a good communicator. Mm-hmm. And then men just aren't. So and well, you being a black man, how do you think that men can start communicating better? Well, I, I I think there are two conversations happening simultaneously because I'm having one conversation with men mm-hmm. and I'm having a different conversation with women. The conversation I'm having with men is to um, introspect mm-hmm. and, and take time to understand who you are and why you are, why you think the thoughts you think, why you say the things you say, mm-hmm. why you do the things you do. Because I think a lot of masculinity is just go yeah but it's not necessarily reflection it's not necessarily insight and and depth in reasoning Mm -hmm. uh or depth and consider existential intelligence yeah so i encourage men to be more uh more of that and that's that's part of that is understanding the world around you Mm -hmm. understanding women understanding yourself understanding politics understanding economics understanding psychology Mm -hmm. um on the flip side um I think women could better empathize with men. I don't think women understand the the deficit mm-hmm. as far as communication that we have. Just like I said, y'all say more words, y'all talk earlier, y'all are encouraged to talk more. Yeah. Um, so men just don't have that skill. And not saying you should coddle a nigga, but... Understand what he's saying, mm-hmm. not how it makes you feel. Mm-hmm. 
Because I think that's what happens a lot of times so with me. <laughs> that's why sometimes I don't communicate because I'm like, I know you're not going to hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You're just going to hear how it makes you feel. And I might not know how to sugarcoat. It might not be sugar. It might not be sweet. Yeah. So how am I incentivized to continue to be honest, to continue to be transparent if I have to tiptoe around the delicacies, intricacies of your emotions? And I can get that because even me being a very, I'm a very blunt, straight shooter kind of person. And I've been with people who were a little bit more sensitive because I'm, I'm a very sensitive person, of course. I'm very emotional, very sensitive. But when it comes to saying what needs to be said, I'm just, I'm going straight into it. And it, and it can be hard to, to try to communicate with someone who takes this little thing and blows it up when it's just like, I'm just trying to have a straight up honest conversation and just kind of have that. But I mean, I can understand because I know sometimes even with myself within the realm of my relationship, sometimes I can have those off days where he could say something and I'm just like, you know what? Do you know how that makes me feel? <laughs> you know, when he's just like, I'm just trying to tell you yeah. what it is. But, but you know, what's interesting, it, it seems like the same issue we're having with you guys is the same issue you guys are having with us because we don't feel heard. Mm. We don't feel prioritized. Mm. We feel like it may seem like we're coddled to society, but when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, one-on-one -on -one relationship that we have with men as women, we don't feel like we're heard. A lot of us, we feel like we're kind of just there, or we're either tossed to the wayside, or you know. I think what's tough because you know the the element we haven't touched on, and I don't know if you have enough time to, is white supremacy, the history of white supremacy, the fallout of yes. white supremacy. Yes. And, and the systematic dismantling of the black family yes. as the black like foundation, as the black power structure. Not to get too much into it, but... Um, that has a, a lot to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It has a, a ton to do with it. But um, one of the things that's important to understand... Hold on, let me... Put my shit on airplane mode so nobody calls me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that's important to understand, uh, do you know who Miles Monroe is? Miles Monroe. Yeah, he was, I think he was a Bahamian preacher. He was a preacher. Oh. He died in a plane crash a couple oh, okay. years ago. Okay. But anyway, um, brilliant man. Okay. One, One of the things that he talked about in one of his sermons, he said that, you know, I do know I used to listen a lot to his stuff in college. Yes. Okay, okay. Go One ahead, of the things ahead. he talked about, he said, you know, part of the uh, miscommunication between men and women is that uh, men and women process love differently. Yes. Women process love as romance, mm -hmm. as caretaking, as, as attentiveness. Yeah. Men process love as one thing. No respect. Respect. Mm-hmm. Now, let's put it in the, the framework or of white supremacy and what it's done to our family. Black men have been systematically killed, mm -hmm. incarcerated, and locked out. Mm -hmm. While black women have been allowed to flourish in a masculine way. Yeah. So, number one, I'm not allowed in the boardroom for many, many... Um, very specific, granular, like systematic things were done. School to prison pipeline, mass incarceration to make sure I don't get into the boardroom. Right. Yeah. And then we talk about inclusion. Mm -hmm. Black women are encouraged into the boardroom. So I'm emasculated by the fact that I can't even get there. I'm emasculated by the fact that you are a better provider than me mm -hmm. and provision and protection are the top two priorities of masculinity. And yet we don't feel protected. <laughs> so your mere yeah. existence yeah. in the white supremacist power structure yeah. is emasculating to the black man. On top of that, because you are a better man than me, how can you respect me? Mm -hmm. So I don't feel loved by you. And I see a lot of times like, you know, you'll, you'll hear women say, you know, whenever a black man dies, the people at the front lines are the are black women. That's true. Yeah. But again, when you understand, we don't digest love as fighting for us. Wow. We don't digest love as loving on us and you go. King. We digest love as respect. Mm, so all of that, rah, 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 you guys don't care about. 
And see, and that hurts us the most because we show up and show out, whether it's through the rally, the protests, whether it's through sticking by you when you don't have anything, being beside you when you're trying to build. For us, we feel like I'm giving you my, see, for us, time is the way we give our love so much. Our devotion is where we try to show up for you guys to show you guys love. And then when we feel like it's just, Unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't make you you can assist in a in a man's masculinity, but you can't make a man a man. You can't. A woman cannot make a man a man. And 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 unfortunately, like I hear a lot of times, women complain like, Mm -hmm. "Oh, I I was there for him. I cooked. I cleaned everything, and he just wouldn't commit." Until that man feels like a man for himself, he can't be a man for you. Yep, amen to that. I to learn that. He can be a man for you. So whatever you do, if you're not willing to just sacrifice that mm-hmm. and take that L hoping he remembers, mm-hmm. you're just going to have to. Yeah, because there's a lot of stories that, like, as women, um, we, we pass around to each other is that, you know, oh, be careful about getting with a guy who is down below because when he gets on top, he's going to forget about you. Um yeah we get- <laughs> the reason is but do you know why the thing is, is and I've seen these things happen mm-hmm. and I do wonder why men get that way the reason is because because he wasn't there yet mm-hmm. he didn't choose you mm. you were the best he can do at the time mm. so I guess when it comes to marriage men marry the women who comes at the right time not the one they, they're madly in love absolutely. with absolutely Absolutely. I'm a true believer in that. Absolutely. Men don't marry for love. No. And, you guys and but, don't. but that's the reason I think men love more authentically than women. Mm. And I, you you post that a mm-hmm. lot. And I think I can see how because a lot of women were like, How? Mm-hmm. We are here for X, Y, and Z and things of that nature. And I think for you guys it's like you don't even have to do all of that. A woman could fall it's, madly in love fifteen times in her lifetime. Some niggas haven't got over their, their high school crush. Mm-hmm. Men love more authentically because men understand on a subconscious level that love is a duty. Mm-hmm. Niggas ain't excited about love. Because <laughs> 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 my I, man is not excited about when love. When I find out I'm he in love with somebody, love, it's like, God know. damn, I love this bitch. <laughs> Niggas are not excited about love. They're not. Women love love. Women are in love with the pageantry of love. We love it's the passion. We we live for passion and mm-hmm. intensity and mm-hmm. all the things that are mm-hmm. endorphins kicker. Mm-hmm. You guys and that's why it's inauthentic because you can manufacture that. Mm-hmm. You can because manufacture you can that. act a certain way. Mm-hmm. Because like with with my mm-hmm. first serious relationship, he acted a certain way for two years. Yep. Yep. Great, and then out of nowhere, boom! Yep. Who he was came out, and I was like, I don't like this. I would have never gotten with this like if I, I would have gotten that. And, and and it's 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 again, it's not y'all's fault. It's part of I think it's part of our programming, our socialization. Men, somebody said, uh, 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 men fall in love with what they see. Women fall in love with what they hear. That's why men lie, and women wear makeup. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I have to, I have to, that world that you've created, that fairy tale you've yeah. created for yourself, I have to be your Prince Charming. Yeah, to come in to get what I want. To come but into see, your castle, yeah. But see, and, and for Prime that to happen, how was that authentic? Because now you were just trying to reel me mm-hmm. in, which I think every man does to mm-hmm. us. Whether, even the good men, like, mm-hmm. even with my boyfriend, he mm-hmm. did things to really reel me mm-hmm. in, like, for no, sure. Well, I'm but saying I think, when it's you know, love. When it's love. When oh, it's love. okay, you feel like that's when, when it's you love. guys are more authentic because mm-hmm. you guys' love don't waver. Yeah. It's based yeah. on emotion. It's it, it's our, our love is based on duty. Mm-hmm. Women's love is based on emotion. Yeah. And your the emotional part of your brain is mm-hmm. not your smart part. The emotional part when you start making emotional decisions, we do. it yes. actually makes you dumber. So the 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 difference is Men understand love is a duty. Men didn't drink the Kool Aid of Hollywood and fucking uh, the, the, the Notebook and all the, that. You bullshit. guys were not taught to. Y'all did. So if the if if the elements are right, you could really make any woman fall in love with you. Mm, yeah. You could really make any woman fall in love with you under the right conditions. Now, a man first, he has to be attracted to you. Mm-hmm. Then it has to be like he has to be in the mindset to be in love. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. So he has to decide like. I I'm I've built this house. I need somebody to come in and decorate it. So you see why I say that 
for us as women mm. dating the average man is so hard because mm. there's like a thousand and one things you guys have to to I don't want to say manipulate, mm. but like build and put in pieces in order to want to be with someone and be committed, whether it's marriage or a long term relationship. But see, that that's why that's why I encourage women to be more um, honest with themselves. A lot of these guys that you're forcing to be Prince Charming didn't want to be Prince Charming in the first place. So I'll give you a good example. I think I gave uh, I gave it during the other video, but um, it was, there was a there was a girl I met uh, in this organization function that I was a part of, mm-hmm. and she said she moved to Charlotte when I lived in Charlotte at the time specifically to find a black man, mm-hmm. and she was saying like I would even date a mechanic. Yeah, I was like, oh really? Okay. She was like, yeah, I, I got connections. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to help him invest and things like that. And, you know, after, you know, a couple of years, maybe he'll be running a, a ton of mechanic workshops. I said, you don't want a mechanic. You want a mechanic with entrepreneurial aspirations. Those are two different men. Yeah, they are. And unfortunately, what happens is a woman and it's 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 a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. A woman has the ability to make something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. A woman has the ability to put any man's face on the Prince Charming body that she wants. So therefore, it doesn't matter what he's saying. Mm-hmm. It matters how he makes you feel. Mm-hmm. So this man could say, I don't want relationship. I'm not ready for monogamy right now. Which we're but, awful at not listening to that. But y'all won't listen. We're awful at that. And then we wonder like listen. why <laughs> why we're having such issues and, when and, you're and, actually and, married. And in a way, it's selfish because yeah. it's not about him it's yeah. about you but why do you guys follow then why do you go years pussy. but but that's awful why yeah. keep why keep that train going if you seriously do not want that it's convenient well then get somebody else to be convenient with who who understands that you just don't want anything serious you just want pussy. again i'm not saying this is right i'm just telling you what it is i As know a guy. but the that's, reality is the girls that the quality women do want relationship, do want monogamy, do want the whores and shit. They're mm-hmm. cool with it is what it is, mm-hmm. but we don't want them. You guys so it's don't a want the whores. Story. Exactly. It's a cast too. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, so, it's a, so like the reality of it is like the vast majority of men under, I'm 28. So I guess I fall in this as well. Mm-hmm. Vast majority of men under 30 who haven't established themselves, mm-hmm. they're not ready for monogamy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're, they're simply yeah. not. I can see that. And it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean they don't like you. They don't love you even. Mm-hmm. But they know they're not ready. A man will give up on the... I mean, will, will allow the love of his life to go. Find somebody who's ready to give her what she wants. Mm-hmm. As opposed to holding on to her. Mm-hmm. After, you know, he destroys her heart a couple times and steps on it. Maybe she's destroying her own heart because she didn't listen <laughs> to him the first there. time. <laughs> but then, so, as as a culture and as a society, should we bump up the marriage age? Because maybe, because every because there's a lot of, of um, therapists, couple therapists that say that it's it's better for people to marry above 25 and actually push it to 30 which i agree because that's when your brain is done developing and you're actually making rational decisions i totally understand but it seems like you know from the ages of let's say about 22 until we're 30 as women we're still like we're actively looking for a husband and but we don't want someone that old so should we as a society say the normal age that you should go towards marriage is 30 and just leave it at that and then leave your 20s to just do whatever the hell you want to do and then find each other later. Yes and no. So there, there's this book called, um, it was written by a divorce attorney. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but it was an interesting, interesting dude. I think he did like a TED talk. He did some shows on YouTube, mm-hmm. but he wrote a book called, if you're in my office, it's too late. Mm-hmm. If you're in my office, it's already too mm-hmm. late. And um, during one of the interviews that I watched of his, he talked about marriage as a technology. He said the reality is marriage is a technology. A technology is something that solves problems. Yeah. So before you get married, figure out what problem are you trying to solve for yourself? Mm-hmm. Is it loneliness? Do you want children? Is it companionship? Do you want a business partner? What exactly is, it, is the problem that you want to solve? And be honest about it and be upfront about it. Now, when you consider it 
as a technology as opposed to just I'm supposed to do this after I'm 22 or whatever the fuck, then you can be more strategic about what type of person do I need to marry? Mm-hmm. What type of person do I need to be mm-hmm. in order to marry and sustain a, a household and the whole nine? And the problem is the reason the divorce rate is as high as it is is because nobody's honest about, about that. why they're answering. The People marriage. are marrying because they are supposed to. Yep, I agree. I think um, I think especially like with like for instance with our culture, with you being Nigerian, me being Haitian, um, my family are they're up my ass to hurry up and get married and have kids like all the time. I don't know. Do you get that from your family? As a dude, not really. But even if I did, I don't listen. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm the oldest too, so like they don't really tell me shit. Really? Mm. I wonder if it would have been that way. It's probably so. Yeah, yeah no, because yeah. we're held to a totally different standard yeah. as girls versus yeah. boys. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm but I see how, and, and luckily, I have a really strong mindset because I really feel like if I would have constantly, like, if I if I would listen to my family that much. I feel like I probably would have hurried up and just found somebody, get married, and had kids because I, because I would have been conditioned and have this thing in my brain and say, you have to do it this way. You have to do that. Now, for me, one thing where, because I'm not, I'm not traditional, but yet I am traditional. The only place in my life where I'm traditional is where I want to be married before I have children. That's the only thing. Other than that, everything else, it's, it's up for discussion. And I, I would say, I think, the pressure that women have to be a wife, I feel like that might be the issue too. Because if mm-hmm. if like if like Absolutely. you're saying, we're constantly dragging you guys, right? We're constantly pulling you guys, even though you're like you're telling us, I don't want this, I don't want to do this, I'm not ready for this, and we're still like, nope, you got to do it. We're still trying to rope you in, and it's only because of what we're conditioned as a society. Because mm-hmm. if by thirty we're not married, we're not anything. Yeah. And just like for me, like I'm 27, my sister tells me like, well, you know, we have reproductive issues in our family. So you don't want to wait that long to have kids. True. But then again, I'm not stable enough to have a child. Me and my partner, we're not in a place where adding another child to the family is just it's not it's not feasible. So I had to make the cautious decision like I don't give a damn what anybody say. I'm doing it my goddamn way. But I don't think a lot of women are that headstrong. And I think. There's probably a conversation that we need to have as females amongst each other to weight that pressure off. It's 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 tough, and I, and I talk about this a lot. I think we're we're at a crossroads in human history, human evolution, because part of the technology of marriage was created to solve the issue of, I mean, solve the problem of I want kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's better. It's more productive to have kids under these, you know, mandates or under these this institution of marriage. Institution marriage. Of marriage. Yeah. Agree. What's tough is those timelines for women, especially, mm-hmm. are still there. That's and that's the issue. They're still there. Yeah. So that pressure, whether your parents are up your ass or they're not, nature's still up your ass. And and it's, if 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 you are, I think the only difference is the institution of marriage isn't a necessary piece of having kids anymore, mm-hmm. because now people are doing in which vitro I, fertilization, which I totally disagree with. Which and you have valid points, mm-hmm. but the problem is women have to. So it's like I wish women didn't have to, but you do. Mm-hmm. Because leave it, the niggas like I think our peak earning potential is forty five. Yeah. So if if it was up to men, yeah, we would get married at 40, 45. Oh yeah, I, oh, absolutely. Y'all can't do that. No, <laughs> you can't Are wait till forty five. My my eggs would be scrambled. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, and I, and I, you know you hear niggas like complain like she's uh, pressuring me for a relationship, but I can't pressure her for sex because we want sex, you want monogamy. Mm-hmm. You know, but. The the pressures are pressures are different, mm-hmm. and that's why that's why I empathize with women because you can't play around like you. It's and the movement is going towards like the city girl movement is going towards girl. Just have fun in your twenties. But we don't have that time to have fun. It's like yeah, have fun, but just remember that there's a because I I had fun during college. I had a grand old time. But by the time I hit twenty five, I was like, all right, girl. Yeah. It's time to get it together. You need to find your career, or you need to find a mate because by thirty, you want to. 
start having kids. So get it together. But yeah, and it's true. This whole movement of like, I mean, I love this movement of where women are like, you know, into their whole sexuality and things like that, but we're not having those conversations. But also with you saying that you empathize with women because of the timeline, Mm -hmm. a lot of men don't. Mm -hmm. They think we have all the time. We don't. And I I think we, you guys don't understand it because how can you? You're not a woman. Mm -hmm. You don't understand it. It's like you can want kids and hold out till you're 45 and you're still, you're good. Like my adopted dad, he he had his at 45. Mm. Like, so what? Yeah. Who cares? But for us, like, no. My biological father, he had his last child at 52. Mm. Yeah. My sister, her father had his last one at like 70. Yeah, yeah. Let us have that child come out all kinds of wrong. Yeah. But I think my biggest thing and hope with our culture is that we prioritize union. Because we cannot move forward as a people if our family structure is not healthy. We're just not. It's just not going to work. I come from a very broken home. My broken home is so broken, you can't even find the missing pieces. Mm -hmm. And there's so many other people our age that have those things of coming from broken homes and it's, it's constantly repeating. And now we're in this generation now, you know, having kids and not being married or just having kids just to have kids, it's normalized. And I don't think it's the best thing for our culture. I mean, do what you want. It's your life, but I don't think it's, it's productive in order for us to get ahead because we're so behind as a people. We have 400 years to catch up on. Yeah, 400 years to catch up on and we're not realizing that we need to make a priority of coming together to build families because legacy is so important we're not even having that conversation and that's something that that's the thing that I really it irritates me with our culture because every other race they understand legacy yeah. they understand family dynamics but yet for some reason well of course this dates back to slavery of course but even with all the knowledge that we have reading the Willie Lynch letter even with reading that and having that in front of our faces we're still not changing our mindsets knowledge and understanding are two different things you're right because i don't think we're understanding